welcome to this virtual tour of some of the treasures held by the Box Hill Historical Society. We hope you enjoy it. A bit about the Society first though. The Box Hill Historical Society is a voluntary organisation formed in 1963 and based at the Box Hill Town Hall. We are an archive, not a museum, in that we mainly collect paper-based materials rather than objects, although we do have a few of those in the collection, as you will see. But for now, sit back and enjoy the tour. These pieces of paper don't seem very interesting, but take a closer look. They are the first two pages of a four-page report on the health of the district, then known as the Shire of Ngunnawadi. Reports such as these were submitted annually to the State Government Health Department. The originals have long since disappeared, but the Society holds duplicates for the period 1889 to 1984. If you want to find out what local life was like at a particular time, these reports will show you. They provide not only population data, but details such as the water supply, the drainage arrangements, the number of piggeries, dairies and butchers, the type of sewerage system in place, and the number of people who contracted infectious diseases and what those diseases were. For example, in 1890, the only water supply was that collected from house roofs and stored in tanks. As the report noted, this was entirely inadequate. Indeed, members of at least one local family were later shown to have died from drinking tank water contaminated by lead flashings on a roof. In 1890, in a population of just over 4,000, only 400 houses had a toilet pan system in place, where a nightman came weekly to take away a full can of excrement and replace it with a clean one. The forms even show the cost of this service, five shillings a quarter. For some years, there is additional material, as well as the basic forms. For example, for a few years in the 1890s, there were detailed listings of dairies, including the names and addresses of owners or lessees, the size of their land and the condition of their animals. In the 1920s, the names and locations of midwifery hospitals were given. There were also lists of names, addresses and ages of locals who contracted infectious diseases. These later lists have been supplemented by additional research by the Society, as will be seen by the next slide. As mentioned, the annual health reports sometimes included additional material. For many years, there were separate reports from the medical officer, who was a local doctor appointed by the council. These reports would have statistical data on the number of people who were born and died, with a breakdown on the ages and causes of death. They also listed the number of people who contracted various diseases, such as diphtheria, scarlet fever, typhoid fever, polio, and the biggest killer of all, tuberculosis or TB. In attempting to find out whether the originals of these health and medical reports had survived, it was discovered that the Public Record Office had some 20 boxes of, co of council correspondence files covering the period 1914 to 1926. These were inspected and it was realised that local doctors were legally required to notify the council and the state government whenever they diagnosed a patient with an infectious disease. To make it easier for the doctors, standard forms were drawn up for them to complete and these forms have survived in this correspondence. There were also reports from the medical officer who had to try and identify the reasons why a person had caught the disease. Thus, an inspection of the patient's house was always made. And there were reports of those who had died. When the 1919 flu pandemic hit, the forms were modified to show whether the patient went to hospital or not. The Society has made digital copies of all of this material and prepared an index of the names and addresses of not only those residents who caught an infectious disease, but also of those who caught influenza in 1919. The indexes can be seen on our website, details of which will be given at the end of this presentation. The Council correspondence files held at the Public Record Office 
didn't just contain the infectious diseases forms as shown in the last slide, but also included a wonderful collection of letters on a wide range of topics. Digital copies have been made of much of this material. This letter is from one of the few female council employees. Altogether, three letters from her have been found. There were letters from other employees, either seeking to take some leave, or a pay rise, or resigning. But there were also letters from those seeking employment, and they came from all over Victoria, and from both men and women. An index has been prepared of these employment-related letters, and it too is on our website. Other material included lists of sporting club members for the period 1916 to 1918, and that will eventually go on our website too. This photo is one of a number held by the Society which show the activities of the Wattle Club. Formed in 1911 at the suggestion of Mr E. W. Greenwood, the club ran until 1926. It was open to all male youths 16 years or older and met on a Saturday night in the hall in Lindsay Street, later used by the Girl Guides. The club organised social, sporting and cultural activities for the members, including concerts and comedy shows for charities, lectures, debates, table tennis, drafts and chess, even an orchestra for a period. At various times they had their own lacrosse, cricket, football and tennis clubs, with the latter even having women members. We hold extensive records of the club's activities, including photo albums of their picnics and other outings, copies of a gazette they published during the First World War, which has letters from members serving overseas, minutes of meetings, a written history, and even a cap that was used in one of their sporting clubs. During the Second World War, the State Emergency Council for Civil Defence was set up and required each council to appoint air raid wardens. Subsequently, a call was put out for all eligible volunteers to assist with air raid precautions and provide first aid and other assistance in case of bombing attacks. Over 1,000 local people volunteered, nearly half of them were women. The cards they completed are extant and are held in the Society's archives. While the male volunteers were required to provide their exact birth dates, discretion was used in the case of women, who only had to submit a broad period, 17 to 35 years, 36 to 50 years, or over 50. As can be seen, Sheila, an industrial chemist who worked for the Kiwi Shoe Polish Company, had completed a first aid certificate and undertook other classes. An index has been prepared of the surviving cards and it can be seen on our website. In 1924, the Cronin Memorial Horticultural Scholarship was established in memory of John Cronin, a former director of the Royal Botanical Gardens, who died the previous year. The scholarship would be open for competition by boys in state and public schools in Victoria and fund them for a two-year course in horticulture. A committee was formed with the Lord Mayor serving as Treasurer and members of the Nurserymen and Seedmen's Association serving as the Executive. To raise funds for the scholarship, it was decided to hold a Gardening Week exhibition in late March 1925. The exhibition was the first of its kind to be held in Victoria and contained, quote, novel gardens, new and rare novelties from all parts of the world, and a massed effect of flowers, shrubs and foliage. Two large halls were completely filled with floral display, fruit and vegetables. The event was very popular with the public, with thousands of people attending. It was subsequently decided to hold it every year and continues to this day at the exhibition buildings. In 1929, a mahogany shield valued at £25 was offered by the Garden Week Committee as a prize for the municipality which could be called, quote, the best garden suburb. Councils encouraged residents to nominate their gardens for inspection, and the municipality which achieved the highest percentage points was awarded the shield to be held for 12 months. Each badge on the shield contains the name of the council who won in a particular year. Box Hill councillor R.H.L. Sparks 
who was president of the Nurserymen and Seedsmen's Association, subsequently approached the Box Hill Horticultural Society and suggested that a serious effort be put into winning the shield for Box Hill Council. The society agreed and a subcommittee was set up. By concentrating on a large number of good gardens rather than a few champion ones, the society achieved success in its first attempt. The effort was repeated so many times that the Herald Garden Competition was finally dropped and the shield given permanently to Box Hill Council in 1958. It was on display in the council chambers for a number of years, then put into storage before finding its way to the Box Hill Historical Society where it was also in storage until 2019 when it was put on display during the Society's Heritage Week display. This is Marshall Tweedy, who was born in Kilmore in 1891. His father James became head teacher at Tally Ho School East Burwood in 1900 and promoted gardening among his pupils. In 1903, when only 12 years old, Marshall won first prize for six cut flowers grown by a state school boy in an education department competition. In 1905, he won the children's prize at the Box Hill and Doncaster Fruit Growers Association show. Qualifying as a dentist, he established a business at the former railway hotel, the site now known as Tate's Corner. But his real love was gardening, and he had a very long involvement with the Box Hill Horticultural Society including serving as president from 1941 until 1967. He was largely responsible for the very popular garden shows held at the town hall four times a year and the repeated wins in the Herald Garden Shield competition. He also served on the committee of the National Rose Society of Victoria, the Royal Horticultural Society and the Iris Society. In 1956, he became the first recipient of the City of Box Hill Civic Award for exceptional and meritorious service to the local community. Tweedy Court and Tweedy Court Reserve in Box Hill North are named after him. The records of the Horticultural Society were deposited with the Historical Society some years ago and consist of lists of office bearers, minutes, a history of the organisation and garden show programs. This photo shows the Box Hill Primary School Drum Band, which was formed in 1971 with the assistance of Jake Jacobs, a retired British military drummer who lived in nearby Medway Street. When the school was forced to close in the 1990s, many of their records were donated to the society. They include many photos of classes and sporting teams, school magazines and newsletters, and even the large drum. If you went to this school, please get in touch once the pandemic ceases, as the names of children are not given in a number of the class photos, and it would be great to be able to identify them. We hold records from another, other closed schools too. This is one page of many thousands of pages that we hold from rate valuation books for the period 1947 to 1984. These are a little different from ordinary rate books as they can give additional information such as the date a house was built, the size of both the land and the house, the occupation of the tenant and sometimes the rent paid. Occasionally the back of the page has details of the previous owners and the date they bought the property along with the price that they paid for it. Additional detail may include the permit number when alterations were done. There are some 110 of these books and the Society is in the process of creating an index to them. The period 1947 to 1953 has already been completed and is online. A section of East Ward for the period 1954 to 1984 is also now online. This flyer was produced by the Box Hill City Theatre Company which was originally known as the Box Hall City Drama Group. The group was one of a number formed from the 1950s onwards with the assistance of Box Hall Council, who set up a Citizens Committee for Community and Cultural Activities. Some of the other clubs established at this time include the Film, Art, 
horticultural and ballet societies, and a bit later, our own historical society. We hold extensive records of the Box Hill Theatre Group, as it became known, including programs from 1953 to 1984, three books of press cuttings, summaries of the group's history, and many photos of individual members of the group and of some of their performances. One of their early activities was taking part in the cavalcade of the Southern Cross performance at City Oval in 1954. This was a huge spectacle involving every local community group and where Chips Rafferty played several historical characters. We even have a program signed by him. That concludes this brief tour of some of our treasures. We have many more. Why not research your own history and connection in Box Hill and surrounding areas through the archives of the Society. Thank you.